Hi, my name is Cold Bear, and let's start with the Bloodline. This is an open world fantasy action RPG where you will take on the role of a descendant of a magical lineage. You are gifted the power of foresight by an ancient god to protect the world from evil. Here the adventure is yours. You will follow quest lines to help the people or roam the world freely at your own pace, allowing organic opportunities or organic deaths to arise. You will reform bonds between kingdoms, construct a village and prepare the world for the return of evil stuff. Just like in the Elder Scrolls games, here you will explore the world join various guilds, hunt magical creatures, or become a bard at the local tavern. The game doesn't hold your hand or penis, you can enjoy and experience it in any way you desire. Small Land Survive the Wilds here you'll traverse puddles as big as a lake, scale skyscraper-sized trees and scramble through cavernous cracks and roads as you explore a huge open world from a new perspective. Well, honestly, we all saw this in Grounded already. But that game is obviously oriented to a younger audience, and Small Land is more like a traditional open world RPG with heavy crafting and survival elements. Yeah, keep that in mind. The game is filled with various challenges. The squirrel gangs that see you as a walking peanut can be a little overwhelming, and add an extra expect a twist to your tiny adventures. One of the coolest thing is that you can ride various creatures, and not only on the ground, there are plenty of flying mounts as well. And for me, after flying for countless hours in Hogwarts Legacy, it's very hard to go back to any game that doesn't have this feature. Anyway, you can play the game alone or with friends, but keep in mind that it is still in early access, so you can run into various problems nobody else has ever even seen before. Also, if you are afraid of spiders, fair warning, you are a pussy. I'm kidding, I just wanted to stress out that here you will encounter some realistically looking and moving spiders that may not be compatible with your raging arachnophobia. Trailmakers here you will build a car, plane or boat, or mash them all together as a transforming car plane boat and explore the world. You can play the campaign, learn the basics of building and try piloting various vehicles. Go to one of the sandbox maps and build a mechanical potato you always dreamed of owning in real life. The game offers a variety of weapons you can use to build the biggest, baddest vehicle and utilize it against your foes or even friends in epic skirmishes. From miniguns to rocket launchers, bombs and smart guns. Your preferred choice of mayhem is waiting for you here. People are saying that the game is super fun and a bit addictive. Some of the players have hundreds of hours of playtime on record, so be aware that this game may keep your virginity safe and sound for a long time. Crashlands in this open-world survival crafting game, you are a galactic trucker whose latest shipment gets derailed, leaving you stranded on an alien planet. As you hustle to get back your packages, you'll become involved in a nefarious plot of world domination, which will require all of your wits to overcome. You'll learn recipes from the local sentient life, make new friends, uncover ancient secrets and fight deadly bosses. You can also tame everything and build yourself a home away from home as you learn to thrive in this unforgiven world. People on Steam are saying that the game is an entertaining with funny dialogue and challenging combat. Almost 90% of the reviews are positive. Ancestors – The Humankind Odyssey this is a really original and truly amazing game where you play as an ape. Yeah, your journey starts 10 million years ago and by then we still shared our ancestors with gorillas and chimpanzees. Our last common ancestor with the apes, chimpanzees to be exact, is known to be roughly about 5 million years old. So you start as an ape and over the years evolve into an early human. The whole game spans from 10 million to 2 million years ago. Your task is for you and your tribe not to die and not to choose the path of extinction. The future of humanity is is in your hands, like literally. As developers say, evolution was not written in stone. Your decisions will shape how you will overcome obstacles, increase your species and what knowledge you will pass on to future generations. You can focus on specific attributes or choose a more balanced approach to survival. Your clan's ability to survive will be directly impacted by your decisions and choices, making each player's experience a unique one. It's a wonderful game reminding us that we are just starting to go on our evolutionary path as human species. 2 million years is nothing. Dinosaurs existed for 165 million years before they all died out. Except the birds, of course, add another 65 million years to that big number. That is a huge difference. Not as huge as your mama, though. Black Skylands 
This is a steampunk experience that combines elements of open world, sandbox, top-down shooter and action-adventure games. You'll become a skilled and valiant young Sky Marshal, fighting to protect your people from the invading bad guys. You will take command of your own airship and embark on a journey through a world of boundless skies. Gather resources to craft powerful weapons, upgrade your ship to new heights, unearth ancient secrets and engage in beautiful battles. When I played the alpha or demo version of this game a few years ago, I was really impressed by the style of the game. It surely draws inspiration from Hayao Miyazaki and his creations. Also, do yourself a favor and prepare for yourself some Abney Park, Steam Power Giraffe and other soundtracks from steampunk bands. This way you can truly elevate your experience with Black Skylands, that's for sure. Cloudpunk here you will play as a person named Rania. This is your first night working for Cloudpunk, a semi-legal delivery company based in the sprawling city of Nivalis. You go everywhere, from the marrow below to the spires that pierce the grey clouds high above. No delivery job is too dangerous and no one is faster than a Cloudpunk driver. You never ask what's in the package you are delivering, but you know, one day everything went south and suddenly you will have to unravel mysteries in a world of corporate conspiracy, hackers and rogue AI. Great original game. Blacktail. Here the choice is yours. Will you become the guardian of the woods or the terror nightmares are made of? You play as Yaga, a 16-year-old girl accused of witchcraft and expelled from a medieval settlement. Well, I know what I would be doing after that. Definitely not helping poor folk from the aforementioned village to heal their sick cattle. No, I would rather secretly put pineapple in their potato salad. <laughs> also, would turn all their delicious beer into milk. Milk of a cat. Yeah, milk of a cat or of a hamster. Anyway, he will decide the fate of the land and its inhabitants, and witness the impact of your decisions on your skills through an implemented morality system. People on Steam are saying that the game feels more mature than the visuals it provides, and the story is really dark and captivating. Starbound this is basically a Terraria in space where you create your own story. There is no wrong way to play. You can go and save the universe from the forces that destroyed your home, uncovering greater galactic mysteries in the process. Or you may wish to ignore this heroic journey entirely in favor of colonizing uncharted planets, collecting rare creatures or delve into dangerous dungeons and lay claim to otherworldly treasures. Discover ancient temples and modern cities, trees with eyes, mischievous penguins and talking ding-dongs. Well, you'll be first to find the but you never know, universe is endless. Dead Side this is a multiplayer shooter game set in an open world. Here you'll experience a realistic post-apocalyptic game environment filled with NPCs and real players. As developers say, that side is all about balancing the dynamics of a shooter and the hard corners of survival games. The world of the game focuses on realistic aspects of life with the ruins of dead civilization. You won't find any zombies here. What? Yeah, you heard right. The name of the game is Dead Side, and it is without zombies. It seems that someone made a huge marketing mistake here. I clicked on that title especially because I thought, hey, a new zombie game, a and it's not. It's like naming your game Best Race and putting no cars in it. Or like naming it Starcraft and putting no crafting in it. Oh, wait. <laughs> Shut up. Choo Choo Charles. Here you will navigate a massive play area in a cute little train and your mission here is to kill and destroy another train, which is a bloodthirsty spider train named Charles. So Mr. Charlie is a very bad train, he misbehaves by eating people alive, he's a very hungry train and he won't stop until you stop him with machine guns, rockets and other weaponry. People on Steam are praising the game for having a great story, characters, concept and design. It's a short game though, it will take about 3 hours to beat it but those are Hours will be legendary. Game has a very positive review score, so don't hesitate. If you ever wanted to hunt for some killer spider train, it is your chance. The biggest downside of the game is that you can't romance other trains or Charlie himself. It would be great if the story took a turn towards breeding new Charlies, so you can't cross that out of your bucket list yet, but who knows what next patch will bring us. Empyreon Galactic Survival this is an open-world space sandbox survival adventure. Here you'll build powerful ships, mighty space stations and vast planetary settlements. Follow your greed and explore, conquer or exploit a variety of different planets and discover strangest mysteries. You'll have to fight alien, human and other biological hazards and survive in a hostile galaxy full of hidden dangers. You can play as a lonely potato or team up with your friends, build new friendships, create alliances or make war to conquer the solar system. The title 
combines elements from space simulations, construction games, survival games and various shooters. About 80% of the reviews on Steam are positive, people say that the gameplay is way better than it looks, and that is always a good sign. Although many players are bashing the difficulty level of the game, some enemies are overpowered and also the learning curve is pretty steep. Yonder, the Cloudcatcher Chronicles. This title can be really entertaining for those who like farming and crafting games like Stardew Valley, My Time at Porsche and similar ones. Although it's not on the same level of quality, it's way shorter and smaller than those aforementioned, but it's really cute and interesting. If you have a hunger for games like that, it may be a good choice. Yonder is a relaxing open-world adventure set in a natural island paradise with 8 distinct environments ranging from tropical beaches to snow-capped summits. But this land is not as perfect as it seems. The mysterious Murg has taken hold of a land, so your task is to remove it. Lilith Odyssey. This is a small but really ambitious indie project you probably never heard about. So here, after the great nature wars have ended, a corrupt galactic government saps life and resources from the many war-weary planets it controls. Your alien family risks everything across an open-world galactic odyssey to find a mysterious land of new beginnings. And they are all aware of their simulated nature. Well, that's a twist. I always say that our world is a simulation, because there is only a slight tiny chance that our universe is the original one and not being simulated in a computer of some other civilization in another universe, which is itself simulated in some other computer by some even more advanced civilization in another universe, and the cycle may continue endlessly. So really, what are the chances that we live in the first one, the original universe? A rhetorical question, but makes you think, right? Anyway, you will embark on a galactic journey to Lilith, a faraway planet of new hope. You will discover the history of the Mulago galaxy relax to in-game radio, grow your fishing, farming and space foring skills and enjoy casual adventure. Sunless Sea this is a horror gothic game. Here you'll be able to explore the Victorian gothic universe of fallen London with a focus on exploration and exquisite storytelling. But be careful, some trips might lead you to a certain death, or worse, cannibalism, or the worst, lack of potato salad. Anyways, people really enjoy the beautiful art of this game. Here you'll also meet some very well-painted Lovecraftian sea monsters, and the whole vibe in general is very ominous. Even though you will have to read walls of text here, you will do that with joy because the writing is fantastic. But don't expect fancy combat or fast plot lines full of exciting events. No, game is slow, but the brilliant storyline, writing quality and world-building aspects are all handled very well. The only downside is, since you will die a lot, you will have to start over. If the giant crabs, sentient icebergs and swarms of bats don't get you, madness and cannibalism certainly will. And those nicely written texts won't seem as nice to read for the tenth time. Sunless Sea is more like choosing your own adventure novel than a game. If you like slow-paced, story-rich games, then get in the boat and try to fish the biggest marinated herring you can find. Yes, they come from sea already marinated, if you're lucky enough. Paradise Killer on Steam it has above 90% of positive reviews, so that should keep your attention. This game is set on an island outside of reality, and revolves around a rogue human civilization hoping to resurrect dead alien gods. That already sounds crazy, but the gameplay and the story somehow make sense and is truly captivating. The game was nominated as the best adventure of the year by PC Gamer, got 9 out of 10 from IGN and is a true gem for everyone hungry for amazing story-rich game. People are saying that this is one of these games which you would want to forget, and in a good sense. If the mind eraser was already invented, this would be one of the most popular things to erase from your memory so you could play it again. Sable here you'll embark on a unique and unforgettable journey and guide Sable through her gliding, which is a rite of passage that will take you across vast deserts and mesmerizing landscapes capped with the remains of spaceships and ancient wonders. You'll explore the dunes on your hoverbike, scale monumental ruins and encounter other nomads as you unearth mysteries long forgotten and discover what you're hiding behind your mask. The game is single player only and you can already see that it is a work of art. There is a lot in this world just waiting to be discovered and explored. Lord. People on Steam are talking that the game is a little bit similar to the Breath of the Wild. The world is open and the amount of quests here won't let you get bored. The Eternal Cylinder 
You know how we are always whining about all the games being the same? All the games copy other games and then some copies become even more popular than the originals and then everyone is copying the copies until the cycle repeats itself. Yeah, that's not the case with the Eternal Cylinder. I doubt that I have seen anything like this. The game is obviously inspired by some crazy artist or made by one. So he will control this cute creature and wander around with various tasks. But the true meaning of this game lies in its name. An enormous rolling cylinder is approaching and you, along with everything around, are its pizza dough. It is a mobile megastructure of unknown origin. It has destroyed and absorbed countless civilizations over the billions of years of its existence and will do the same to you and your land. It can be delayed, but it has never been truly stopped. Well, maybe bigger being can stop it. W what do you mean by bigger being? I'm talking about your mama. <laughs> oh, shut up. So I guess if you fail, everyone will die. Game has very very positive reviews and it's really underrated. Also, the soundtrack is free to download. That is not what you see every day in this greedy world, that's for sure. Season – A Letter to the Future this is a beautiful open-world narrative visual novel where you play as a young woman from a secluded village exploring the world by bike for the first time. You will collect memories before a cataclysm washes everything away. The game will take you on a quest to discover a new world, one unknown yet familiar. You will document, photograph and record life as you find it, while well, you still can. Each recording tool captures a different layer. Sounds and music, art and architecture, the stories of characters living through pivotal moments. Your tools spill back these layers until you grasp the culture, history and ecology underneath everything. Game has more than 90% of positive reviews and could be great for you to take a rest from various hack and slash bloodshed infused titles and try something different instead. Immortals Phoenix Rising because it was an Epic Store exclusive, it has various issues, from missing content to controller problems, and of course, it needs you to have a Ubisoft account as well. But in general, this is an amazing title. I bought this game for a full price on the release day, and I can proudly say that this is probably the best game I have played in the year of 2020s. I was expecting nothing from it. It looks childish and colorful, and I don't like any of that. You know, I'm 40 years old, you can't buy me with colors. But I started to feel that something is a sus with my prejudice this when I heard the first joke, which was really good, <laughs> but I'm not gonna spoil it to you. And later I started to realize that the whole game is filled with jokes that I find funny, even in the character creation menu. Fun thing is that during the whole game, gods Zeus and Prometheus are talking in the background about you in the past tense, like everything you do has already happened, you know, when they say, and then he saw a terrible monster. You can be sure that you will see a terrible monster in a second, because it's your story that has already happened, but you don't know how yet, only gods know. In other words, you have to live the story gods are talking about. So let's hope that they don't say anything like, and then he put some pineapples into his potato salad. No, 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 no. This is not a horror game, so let's hope they will not say that. Although avoid this game if you don't like puzzles. Phoenix Rising is filled with them, but if you like solving puzzles in Skyrim, for example, you will feel right at home here as well. Generation Zero it may not be the best game on this list. It holds only a mostly positive review score on Steam, but the setting and the atmosphere of the game is really worthy of your attention. Honestly, the game was really hyped upon a release, and when people didn't get a masterpiece, bad reviews started to flow. That is a story of many games, and Generation Zero definitely doesn't deserve that, because it may not be a masterpiece, but it's not a bad game as well. Here you will explore alternative Sweden in 1989. One day Swedes woke up early in the morning, and saw that their beloved Sverige is overrun by evil robots. Where did they came from? Who made them? Nobody knows. Probably evil Norwegians who were envious of Swedish reindeer herds. Everyone knows that casual Swedish deer produces seven times the amount of milk than Norwegian deer does. Even the males. <laughs> that is the fact. Trust me, every Swede in the comments can confirm that. Anyway, the price is really wallet friendly. And most people who left the review on Steam have from 10 to a few hundred hours of play time on record. Stranded Deep in the aftermath of a mysterious plane crash, you are stranded in the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean. Alone, without any means to call for help, you must do what you can to survive. Explore underwater and on land as you hunt for supplies to craft the tools, weapons and shelter you'll need to stay alive. You will have to stay sharp. Hunger, thirst and exposure conspire against you as you brave treacherous elements and the dangerous creatures of the Pacific. And whenever I play survival games, I really wish that I was thirsty and hungry along with my character. 
because I always forget to eat or drink or, you know, to get warm and, and then I die. And most of these games have no happy ending for me. Anyway, let's hope that you will live long and stay alive. I'm kidding, you will not. Outer Wilds. It was named Game of the Year 2019 by Giant Bomb, Polygon, Eurogamer and The Guardian. So that alone should grab your attention. If it grabs something else or somewhere else, call the police. Here you are, the newest recruit of the Outer Wilds Ventures, a space program searching for answers in a strange, constantly evolving solar system. You will have to find what lurks in the heart of the Amino's dog Bramble. Who built the alien city on the moon? Well, obviously aliens, but you know what I mean. Can the endless time loop be stopped? And why is potato salad so delicious? Answers await you in the most dangerous reaches of space. Game has overwhelmingly positive reviews, so you can't go wrong with this one. Tainted Grail The Fall of Avalon. Recently I played it for several hours and I was really impressed. This indie dark fantasy title follows the Elder Scrolls formula to the letter. Here you play from the first person perspective. You can use magic, shoot with bows or swing mighty melee weapons. And the more you use one skill or another, the more powerful it becomes. Literally, the vibes from Morrowind are here as well. If you jump a lot, you will train your jumping skill and later you can jump higher. If you run a lot, you will start running faster. If you fight with a two-handed sword, your two-handed damage will be come higher. If you make a bowl of delicious potato salad, well, you get the point, right? No, only left. Oh, shut up. Also, you can assign various perks and skill points when you level up and create your unique character. And the game really rewards exploration. You can find many hidden items, boss battles, or even entire huge areas if you go off the beaten path. I left starting area with about 15 jars filled with brain and several tongs of a drowner. Tainted Grail The Fall of Avalon really delivers in the field of items and various stuff in general. Like in Elder Scrolls games, you can take items directly from the world and put them into your almost endless pocket. I did the calculations. If you really want, you can carry more than 100 hats. You probably may even become a hat seller. From where did you get these fancy hats, boy? Well, I kill people and take their belongings. Alrighty then, we'll give you one gold for the fancy one. That is a deal. Despite all that, keep in mind that the game is in early access and is not finished yet. And now, thank you for watching and don't forget that in my channel you can find hundreds of videos like that with new ones released almost every day. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye.